Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to talk about input fields. Input fields are versatile GUI controls which are useful to get various kinds of inputs from the user. They are useful in cases in which a simple drop down a button or a toggle is not sufficient. So some examples would be when you want the name of the player as an input, maybe his date of birth or even a single integer. You can add a new input field to your scene by right clicking inside your hierarchy window, going to the UI submenu and then clicking on input field. You can do the same thing by clicking on the game object menu, going to the UI submenu and then clicking on input field. Now input field is a type of compound GUI control which means that it is a collection of various GUI controls which work together in order to create a single GUI control. On the top of the input field game object we have an image component. This image component controls the primary look and feel of your input field. Then we have an input field component which is the master component which controls the input field behavior. And as a child of input field game object we have two text components. The first one is called the placeholder. Now this text component gets filled in the input field when you don't have any input inside your input field. So this can act as an indicator that what type of input you want inside that input field. The second game object is called text and it has a text component attached to it. Now this text component is the actual text component which is filled with any input that you provide inside your input field. Now I will come to the input field component. The first few properties like the interactable or the transition have already been discussed in previous videos of the series so you may want to look over those videos. So I will directly come over to the text component. This has the reference of this text component inside the text game object and this text component actually stores the input string provided by the user. The next variable is a text string which holds the current input provided by the user and if there are no inputs it will return null. The next property is your character limit so you may want to limit your character in certain cases for example a password or age etc. The next property is your content type in which we, you have various convenient options by which you can limit or filter your input field so that, that they can be used only for certain kind of inputs. So I will go over each of these options one by one. Your first option is your standard content type which accepts all kinds of input whether it's a number or special symbol or your normal alphabets. The next option is auto corrected in which you can type in just like uh, your standard content type but if your platform supports it, it will use your platform autocorrect or spell check to check your provided input. So if you are using it on Android, the Android will provide spell check or autocorrect for that input. The next content type is your integer number. In this case, you can only input whole numbers. You can't use decimals or any alphabets or symbols. The next option is your decimal number. In this case, you can only this case is useful for providing any decimal or float values. The next one is alphanumeric. In this case, only uh, alphabets A to Z and numbers 0 to 9 are allowed and no symbols are allowed. The next option is your name content type. In this case, Unity will uh, force capitalization on your provided input. The next option is of the email address. Uh, in this option, it will validate your input so that it confirms to a standard email type of uh, standard email address. The next option is the uh, password content type. In this case, when you are typing in your input, when you are typing in your password, it won't show the your actual password characters on the screen. Rather, it will show an asterisk in place of your uh, characters. Just like in your normal password input fields 
on your login screen of your Facebook or other websites. The next option is your pin content type. In this case, you can only enter uh, numbers as an input and it follows the same rule as a password content type so that it won't show you the actual pin but it will show asterisk in place of your pin number and the last option is of the custom content type in which you have more fine control over what kind of inputs and extra filtering that you can add to your content type Your next property is your line type which controls whether your input field is going to be a single line or multi-line type of input field. The next component after that is your placeholder text component. Now any string in your placeholder text component is used to fill your input field whenever the user has not provided any input to that input field. So for example right now I have not uh, used this input field so the input field is being filled with the text inside my placeholder text component. Now this placeholder text can be of various uses. It can help show the user what kind of input is being expected. So right now uh, this placeholder text is telling me to enter text. You can uh, put more descriptive placeholder text like put your name here, put your password here and whenever the input inside this input field is null it will be replaced by the placeholder text. Whenever you are inputting any string inside your input field there is a vertical blinking line which is called the caret and it acts as a cursor for your input string and the rate at which the caret blinks can be controlled by the caret blink rate parameter. The selection color parameter controls the color of your selection. For example, if I go into the play mode and write something and then I can select it by uh, with the use of my mouse drag and the selection color would be controlled by the selection color parameter. Your last option is your hide mobile input toggle and it is only applicable for iOS devices and what it does is that it will hide the native input field attached to the on-screen keyboard on iOS devices. Now to interact with the input field using your code Unity has provided us with two events. The first one is on value change and it passes a string as an argument and this string would be the current input inside your input field and this event is called every time uh, your input field changes. So if I enter a new character this event will be fired and the second event is the end edit. It also passes a string as an argument the same string uh, the input string of your input field but this is called when the control moves away from your end string. So in cases in which your user has in finished uh, inputting his uh, maybe say his name and then he goes on to other control then this function would be called. If you want to know more about how to use these events how to hook your functions to these events uh, please refer to my video on buttons in this same series and if you want to know more about how to use events which also pass an argument you may want to check my video on toggles. If you know how to use toggles or if you know how to use events that also pass an argument if you have checked my video on toggles then it will be very easy to use the input field events. I have created a very simple setup. I have a game object with a script called input field handler. Now I want to hook my functions to the input field event since it takes a it passes strings uh, string as an argument. So my function would be of a signature like this. This is my uh, since the input field has two events. The first one is the continuous edit event and the second one is the end edit event. So I will create two functions for each of these events. So th let's name it continuous and it takes a string as an argument 
and we will simply debug that string. And then next function is your end edit listener. You can name them whatever you want. And this will also debug that string. To link those newly created functions to these events, I will go to my input field, go to the particular event, click on this plus button, then first drag my game object, which has that script containing that function, then choose my script, and then choose my function. So here I want my continuous edit listener, and for the end edit event, I want my second function which is the end edit listener. Now when I go into the play mode and whenever I am entering any text it is uh, the event is being fired and it is passing me a string which is the exact current input state of my input field. Now when I am finished editing this uh, input field and if I click anywhere else then the end edit uh, event is being called and it also passes the current input state of my input field. Out of these two events, your most commonly used would be your end edit because it is only called once the user has finished uh, editing his input inside the input field. But you may want to use your on value change event if you want to do some stuff like auto correcting auto checking or maybe searching for some commonly used terms etc input fields are also widely used to get numbers or integers as an input so the first thing you do is to change the content type to either integer or a decimal number now the input field event can only return strings. It will return whatever uh, the user has given as an input as a string and you have to convert it to a proper number format. So you can either convert it to an integer using the int.try parse or int.parse function or you can use the float version the float.parse or float.try parse. So I will give you a demonstration in code. So let's say I get a string s as an input and I want to convert it to a number so let's say I have a integer variable number I will make that equal to int dot pass the try pass is a little bit safer but here since our content type is limited to just integer numbers we can be sure that this is not going to create any errors and instead of just outputting s we will take the integer number then convert it to string so that we are sure that we have converted uh, it to an integer we can remove this debug message because we only want uh, the end edit string now when I go into the play mode and enter any integer number now when I am finished editing I get the debug message demonstrating that I can now convert my strings to an integer. You can do the same thing by using uh, by converting it to a float and changing the content type to decimal which accepts decimal values. Now finally I will show you how you can change the content type to password and then use it for your password input fields. So if the content type is password any character that you enter inside your input field would be converted to an asterisk sign instead of your actual characters.